Hello, Jim from Realtruth.net. Today's discussion is going back to the basics. I'm going to go back to the very fundamental truth of the beginning and what the creation was, who we are, and how did we get here. The very basic fundamental truth we must learn and understand is who we are and how we got here. And this is paramount to noting the Creator and what is expected of us, the created. So let's look a little bit at the creation and let's get a good understanding. I mean, we all know this, right? On the most part, those that have even open the pages of the Bible, know this, um, that in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, Elohim, or Yahweh, created the heavens and the earth. Did it all. He created it. He did it in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. And in Genesis 5, we say that we see that the evening and the morning were the first day, eight evening and morning were the second, and then evening and morning the third, fourth, and fifth, and finally the sixth. And when he got all done with the sixth, what did he say? And Yahweh saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and evening and the morning were the sixth day. Yahweh's day uh, starts in the evening at sunset and ends in the evening. It's evening to evening, sunset to sunset, wherever you're at in the world, that is Yahweh's day. Uh, of course, man has turned it into midnight to midnight <clears throat> and messed it all up. But the midnight, no, I won't get sidetracked on midnight to midnight. It all had to do with financial transactions is what it was about. But it was about the God of this world and money. But anyhow, uh, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth and the sea and us all that is in them in six days. Then on the seventh day, the Sabbath was set in order from the very foundation of creation. So doesn't it blow your mind when people want to try and change creation? and turn the Sabbath into sun worship on the first day of the week. Absolutely blows your mind, doesn't it? But anyhow, <clears throat> in Genesis 2.1, thus the heavens and the earth are finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Yahweh ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And Yahweh blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rest from all his work which Yahweh created and made. He blessed it and he sanctified it. You know what that means? He set it apart. It is a set apart day from creation. But that's not what this video is really about. This video is about where man came from and of course what is what we're required to do part of our obedience but uh, in Exodus 20 verse 11 um, again we find for in six days and this is why we can replace Yahweh up here in these verses in Genesis 2 is because in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth. Now that's, that tells us exactly who did the work up here in, in Genesis. He made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. They hallowed uh, it and sanctified it are the same and so 
as he directs us in his commandments, we know yeah, any shadow of a doubt that he is talking about the seventh day as a requirement for rest for mankind. It's not an option. So let's come to the creation of man. Let's talk about us. Let's see where we came from, okay? In Genesis 1.25, this is the sixth day of creation. And Yahweh <coughs> made the beasts of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps upon the earth after his kind. And Yahweh saw that it was good. And Yahweh said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So Yahweh created man in his own image, <clears throat> and in the image of Yahweh created he man. Male and female created he them. And this is on the sixth day. Then in Genesis uh, 2 is we uh, find out how the creation of man and the creation the, of the male and the female progressed. Now there is uh, a really strange belief out there that that there's two creation of man and two creation of Adam because they separate chapter one from chapter two which is just totally absurd uh, but there it is out there I mean people get deceived but in Genesis 2 it talks about what happened in Genesis 1 26 and Yahweh formed man uh, from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being and it can be translated as soul but he was a living being um, when you start using the word you know the, the English translated it to soul and, and when you get into those kind of things you get off track because now you get into uh, uh, ever living people. You, you get into something different. You, you get into the the apparition and the ghosts and those kind of things. But but we were, we are a living being. That is what we are. <clears throat> And we came out of the ground. That is us men. All right. And then in 219, we find out how he made the other animals. And out of the ground, Yahweh formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam. And this is where we see uh, the name Adam comes from. Actually, if you look at the at the Hebrew and let's just look at it real quick let's jump over here to chapter 2 and let's look at this word Adam um, because we want I want to show you because Adam simply means man Adam and man are the same word uh, it's, going a little bit slow on me here but okay I should have done this a little different okay here we go Adam Adam Rudy human being that's what it means in Hebrew it's Adam and uh, so <clears throat> that is where Adam comes from. It's again translators, my goodness, translators. Now, why 
do, let's see, you won't translate or transliterate the name of our creator, Yahweh. You make up some absurd thing like Lord, but yet you want to take the word Adam and you want to transliterate that into the name of man, of, of Adam the man. <sighs> you know, this just means Rudy, a human being, an individual, species, mankind. That's what it means. See it right there? That's what it means. Blood, likeness. Um, so, <clears throat> I digress. Sorry. <clears throat> anyway, um, so out of the ground he formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them to man, Adam, to see what he would call them. However, man called whatsoever the man called the living every living creature that is, was the name thereof. And I, I want to just comment on this. So when you're looking out there at your cows and your horses and your pigs and your chickens and your blue jays and your geese and your ducks and all your animals and all those things out there, guess where those names came from? They came from the very beginning of creation from the man at the autumn, the man. <clears throat> That's where they came from. Think about that just for a minute. Just think about it. Yeah, what's the languages were broke up and you got a cow or something different in Chinese, etc. But the basic what it is, the name that is there for it came from here. A cow is a cow, no matter where you're at. It might be uh, a different word in a different language, but it still means cow for us. You know, we're English, blah. We're like we're some sacred language right we're not anyway again digress sorry anyway adam gave names to all the cattle to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for adam there was no helpmate for him they didn't find one well obviously it wasn't a mistake it was just the way it was right and and uh, Yahweh caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in place of it and the rib which Yahweh took from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now, isn't it interesting uh, how they jump back and forth because this Adam up here is the same word as this man down here. Um, it's just, uh, you know, why didn't he say from Adam here? Why did they make it man? Anyway, and they brought her unto the man. Well, let me show you this. Genesis 2.22. Okay. Uh, oops, Adam. Oh, my goodness, it's the same word, isn't it? Here they translated it as Adam, and here they didn't transliterate it. They turned it into what it really is. Uh, wake up. Open your eyes, folks. Let's get with the program here. <clears throat> Anyhow, from the rib, he made a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Again, same word. And guess what? The man is the one that even named the woman woman. It, can't, it didn't come from Yahweh. It came from the man. He is the one that named her. Anyway, I just think those things are kind of neat, but I want to bring them out because this is about who we are. This is about who we are, okay? Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his, it says wife here, it's the same word, woman, 
or cleave unto his mate, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were pure. They had no blemish. And so out of the dust they came. Um, <clears throat> I stuck uh, Psalms in here uh, because, of course, we're fallen. And we'll get into that. But like as a father pities his children, so Yahweh pities them that fear him. For he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. Folks, we're dust. That's where we came from. Now, now that he created him, uh, he gave him a place to live, and Yahweh planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he formed, whom he had formed, <laughs> again, Adam, whom he had formed, and out of the ground made Yahweh to grow every tree that was pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Yahweh took the man and put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. And Yahweh commanded the man saying, you can eat of every tree freely it's all yours but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day you eat of it you shall surely die and the only thing the man and the woman had to do they were put in the garden to tend for the garden but they were told one thing they could not do and they could not eat of the one tree of knowledge of good and evil. But that is where we came from. Um, conclusion is that, that the Elohim, which we've clearly shown here, who is Yahweh, is the creator of all things in heaven and earth and that includes man who may be created out of the dust of the ground in his own image and likeness and the woman whom he made from the rib of the man we are dust made of the elements of this created earth that Yahweh made into a living being by his own breath we have no rights. We are not entitled to anything. We have no freedom and we can demand nothing. We are created beings from the dust of this earth. We are required to obey our creator and to do what he tells us to do. However, he has given us a free will that we can choose to obey him or not to obey him. And thus the creation was set in order and man was placed in the Garden of Eden to care for it. And that is where we came from. And because of the fall, we will return to dust. And the next presentation will be on the obedience. And I hope and I pray that Yahweh will bless his words, that he will touch your hearts, that he will bring you back to reality, to what is real, and pull you away from traditions and from doctrines of men and worshiping idols and get to know the true 
creator, our true creator, Yahweh. And let's always lift his name up on high and praise him forever and ever. Thank you for listening and may Yahweh bless your hearts.